The following Let's Play has been rated perfectly fine to watch. Any attempts to break the game are for entertainment value only. However, if any typos happen to be found... <laughs> Hello everyone! Welcome back to this game! So, as a reminder, under normal circumstances, you cannot go to Hot Rock before going to Cloud 9. You need to get the hover shoes from Cloud 9 first. However, we are playing on test play mode, and in test play mode, I can just go ahead and hold the circle button and do this. And then we can just go ahead and open Hot Rock first, and it makes me wonder. Okay, so if you recall, it's actually possible to go to Mount Snow before going to Sea Land. Generally, there's no point because you can't really do a whole lot in Mount Snow if you skip Sea Land. But the interesting thing is, I can't remember if I mentioned this, but originally I was planning on letting you go to Hot Rock instead of Cloud 9 if you wanted, but for some reason, I decided to block off Hot Rock. I'm not entirely sure why, and you know, I'm thinking today we should find out. I'm going to go ahead and head to Hot Rock and see if that messes anything up in Cloud 9, or if it turns out that blocking Hot Rock was entirely stupid. Well, first off, you can't walk on water right now because we haven't learned how to walk on lava. Unless I hold circle and this is how I can get over here. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab this trophy real quick. Alright, so here we are in Hot Rock, and it has occurred to me that I have absolutely no chance at beating King Heck. After all, I have to fight a whole bunch of monsters, and I currently have three hearts. I'm going to take a lot more damage than that. So, you know what? Let me see here. Going into I Ignore, where is Hero HP? There's Hero's HP, right at the very top. How convenient. So, I'm just going to go ahead and... Let's see, uh... We'll use Bigger Blast so this guy can survive. And he uses Trance. We'll see if this goes my way. Bird Watch! And then Bigger Blast. And even though we did not take damage, we can grab this here heart. So now, we still have 3 HP, but our ignore has gone up, so technically speaking, even though it says I have 3 HP, I now have more than 3 HP. Remember when I was fighting the King Heck fight and I found some ghost HP somehow? That's how I got the extra HP, that's how I was able to survive the extra hit. And this is how I'm going to survive the extra hit again, because I'm going to go ahead and spam this trick until I have like, I don't know. 30? Let's go with 30. Okay, that was annoying. So I now am at Hero HP 10, which is definitely more HP than I have right now. In fact, this is actually more HP than is actually possible to have in this game. Or rather, supposed to be possible to have in this game. I know that my max was 10 in the final battle, but... In actuality, by having Hero HP 10, that means I have 11 HP. Because when I'm out of these, that means I'm at 1 HP. So, there you go. I stopped here because more often than not, he would attack instead of use the not attacks. So, that kind of slowed things down a lot. In fact, it has been this long just to get to this point. And I figured, this is more HP than I had whenever I fought the that battle before so I should be able to survive now I'm going to tell you right now I am NOT actually going to learn biggest blast or death scare it's pretty much going to be the same situation as whenever I fought that the the boss here before because I don't want to learn biggest blast I want to see what happens if it's possible to go into the final battle without learning biggest blast Especially since Biggest Blast is one of the, oh, the only two attacks you can use on the final boss. While I'm here, I'm going to see if there's like any way I can glitch this uh, mini game again. I glitched it once before by leaving the mini game after having made the trophy appear and the game thought I could start again. So let's see if we can like 
make some other glitch occur here. Alright, I have made the trophy appear and left the room and once again the minigame tries to start, so... Right there is where I want to go, but I'm going to go ahead and grab the trophy now. And... He's going to go into the other minigame. And there's where it is. Let's see here. So, once again, we're in this minigame, but... If I step here... That makes that appear, and then... Once again, we make the trophy appear, but if it's like before, the trophy isn't actually going to stay there. No, and I'm not even going to grab that. Alright, so if we go ahead and come up here... That happens. No, screw you, I'm coming across here anyway. What? So apparently, uh, the events that tell you not to be able to walk on lava is also surrounding this here trophy, which is what prevents it from escaping that spot. Which is interesting because after rebuilding a bridge and coming over here, this isn't an issue, so apparently there's a trigger that makes it so you can walk on there. Interesting. Well, let's go ahead and grab this anyway. Holding circle to get in there. By the way, in case you're wondering where like this lava river comes from, comes from over here, but since it already passed, I wonder if I can like trigger it over here. Yep. I was able to trigger it again. And of course, there's actually no river here because you can't normally see this far off in the screen. Now uh, where, okay. Trigger that again. I'm just going to keep on triggering this just because it's fun. Okay, did I miss it? I think I missed it. Oh, there it is. I hadn't gone far enough yet. I'm just going to go ahead and keep right on chasing it. Because it's fun! Oh, we've reached the edge of the map. Alright then, I'm not even going to worry about Barney armor. And of course, if we come over here where the steamy area is, all I have to do is hold circle and I can just bypass that and this is what it looks like normally. Once again, there really should have been stuff over here to pose a challenge. I mean, yeah, there's a couple of enemies, but there's a couple of enemies everywhere. By the way, it's worth noting that since uh, you can, you have to have learned Barney Armor just to reach this half of the map, there's no events telling you that you can't walk on water. Okay, so here's something that I didn't show off the, during my first time through here. So this is the part where you had to race to the end of the map in order to get the trophy before that lava fall reappears. But if you decide to just leave, it automatically ends. And you're just going to continue on forth to the rest of the level. However, there's a little th interesting detail here. The reason why it doesn't let you continue forth and instead just refills everything with lava is because the map isn't actually out here. This is a separate map, which is how I'm able to create the illusion of this map suddenly being dried up, or rather mostly dried up of its lava. Alright, so we have just collected a trophy. If we come up here, this is where the water, the lava fall is coming from. And if we go like directly to the right, then let's see here. Ah, here we are. And here's Hex Castle. Now, since we can just do this, we don't even have to worry about getting uh, our uh, form swapped our we don't have to w worry about form swapping our way in here and once again because you can't even reach this level without having previously learned how to use wh uh, whirlpools these whirlpools are usable despite the fact that I have not learned how to use them 
so I'll just grab these tokens real quick and we're going to go ahead and head into the King Heck fight. I'm going to assume that I have absolutely no reason to show off this fight because there's no trick here. Although I will point something out. First off, you can't leave the room. The exit is clearly there, but you can't leave the room. And then, after starting the fight, if we come down here, now we really can't leave the room. Alright, so I'm going to point something interesting out. After we get through this, first off there was that snapshot that takes place during the ending. And now he's going to teleport down there and if we go into our inventory here, we have minigame. Apparently, killing King Heck right now is a minigame. And now a minigame is going to be removed. During this fight, we did not have the minigame option. The minigame option is purely given to you just for killing King Heck. This way I could save on items. I didn't have to waste another item slot just for killing King Heck. Oh, I forgot something. I wasn't supposed to grab the trophy yet. Hold on. Let me do that fight again. All right, beating them again. There's the trophy. I'm just gonna go ahead and ignore it. Oh, you're still here. Not entirely sure why I made it so you have to grab your trophy in order to leave. The staircase to Space World it's, uh, uh, Space World doesn't even open. This staircase. This staircase doesn't even appear until you collect the trophy. So no matter what, you have to collect the trophy in order to leave this room. Now here's an interesting fact. I have not talked to Shady yet, so I do not know that I'm supposed to come here for gold bars. But I'm still able to come here for gold bars. If I had to guess, I'd say that glitch is present in the during normal playthrough as well. So how many trophies do I have? I have 12. Okay, so I can go ahead and just place these down here for now so that Space World is going to be open when I'm ready for it. Of course, since I didn't relieve this guy, he's going to be all, hey, you can't be here, and he kicks me to the side. I'm still here! Oh hey, does this work? Yeah, this actually works. I haven't learned how to use those yet, but it works. By the way, just because the effect looks kind of neat, I'm going to go ahead and trigger this guy so he uses trance. All the sprites remain. And I think that's all I want to show off here. I can't think of anything else that I can glitch my way through, so... I guess next we're going to go ahead and head to Cloud 9. We probably won't spend a whole lot of time there, though. Okay, so... Right now I'm on my way back to uh, World 2 to learn Guild Growth, and then I'm going to collect the pair of trophies in... Uh, Lucky Woods because, of course, I want to get the reward for collecting all 300 tokens because there's something I want to test with that. Well, on my way back down, I noticed that if I come over here, this trophy... Come on, do it. Do it. Go up. Thank you. This trophy is apparently free to wander. And apparently it is going to continue wandering until I activate the hover pad that's supposed to be here. Because it can't walk across the hover pad. The hover pad would be sitting right here. Which would prevent it from moving. But since the hover pad's not there right now, the trophy is free to roam. And under normal circumstances, you would never not be able to know that. That's kind of interesting. You know... I can't really think of a whole lot to do here, glitch-wise, so I'm pretty much going to go straight to the boss fight. Oh, um, I'm going to have to grab tokens. So I'm also going to go ahead and grab tokens, but I can do that off-camera. But we're going to go ahead and go to the boss fight. 
And I'm going to do that by, let's see, stepping down here. This is where the trigger is to bring you down the chimney. Which doesn't go anywhere, by the way. But if I hold circle and let go right before I stop, let's see what happens here. And I fall onto the side of the chimney instead of into the chimney. Meanwhile, if I kind of do this, I can jump up the chimney from behind it. And now we'll just go ahead and head down here normal. Now, if there's a way to cheat this battle, I'm not entirely sure how because the trophy appears somewhere up here, but once again, you cannot trigger the trophy and grab it without winning the fight. So definitely the battle with Earthrotter, the first battle with Earthrotter, is the only fight in which you can completely bypass. But there's gotta be some way to cheat this system. Let's see here. Uh, let's let's see what happens if we step above him. That happens. And then, and then now we can't do anything because the screen's all black and stuff. Oh, hey, here he is. And I can't talk to him now. Um. There we go. Now I can talk to him. That was weird. And a screenshot because the screenshot actually appears at the start of this fight because reasons. Alright, now we're getting somewhere. Can we like trigger this over and over again? Is it going to be glitched out? No, now it's all working. That's good. I was afraid I had screwed something up. Is there like anything else up here? Well, this is the top of the map so I can't even go that way anymore. Let me uh, see if I what happens if I like do this. Nope. I was kind of hoping that by warping back in here that would trigger the cutscene that gives me my trophy, but nope. All right, so I guess I gotta. Actually, what I'm going to do is do this pretty much the same way I did the Earth Broader battle. I'm going to collect all the items in which set this guy up to be triggered to take damage. Let's see. So let's uh, find an empty spot in my inventory and see what appears there. Uh, we're just going to go right here. Alright. Well, there's how much HP he has. This says that we started the fight and this says we were in the fight, I guess. Not sure what the difference between the two items are, but if we step here, we're behind cell 1. Oh, so it's using this, it's the exact same items that keeps track of whether we're behind the the uh, cell battery things in the zone bat battle. That's kind of interesting. So this item right here tells the game that if we bump into Earth Rotter, it's going to count for the battle so that we knock down this row of pillars. So I'm going to pretty much go ahead and do the same thing with these except Stand here, hold circle, stand here, hold circle, stand here, and now we should be behind the other cells. Yep, also we destroyed column not one now. So now, I can probably just go ahead and speed through this fight like this. And that's probably going to destroy one of the, uh, one set of pillars. Yep, the one on the right has been destroyed. Now, as I demonstrated during the original fight, if we're next to him and bump to him from the side, we can't uh, actually attack him and uses something called Eclipse. But since I'm standing here holding circle, this line of events on the horizontal roll that tell this guy that I'm on the horizontal roll, we're not able to tell this guy that I'm on the horizontal roll. So it's going to think that I'm kind of behind him. So he's going to like use Death Ray except to his side instead of from him. That's another row of columns defeated. Removed. Whatever you... Oh, I accidentally stepped on the... That. Which means my thing... Nope, I am no longer behind cell 2. Now I am. Now don't move. Thank you. And now this fight is over. 
Trust me, it's over. Oh! This actually brings up something else. Originally, the first time I played through this fight, there was a glitch in the audio when the trophy appeared because it had this extra note because even though I had it timed right, the timing somehow wound up being wrong. So, we're going to see if it's right this time. I haven't made any modifications, so let's see if it sounds right. FM Birds. No, it still did the same thing. Darn it! I was trying to demonstrate it that it's the game's fault that it does that wrong sometimes, and it was wrong again, which might prove that it's my own dang fault that it does that extra note. As Oh, oh, I wonder. I bet I... You know what? I'll just do that fight again to prove it. I have a point to prove! All right, birds, please tell me that this is actually right this time, or... Yeah, right. Oh, gosh darn it! Okay, so apparently it is my fault. You know, I swear, in my original Let's Play of this game, that error wasn't there. I'm gonna have to double-check there. Hey, uh, correctional quip. Was this error there in my original Let's Play of this? What happens if I, like, quick save here? It should be interesting. <laughs> and then it plays again. That's awesome. Yeah, I guess it is my fault. But the rune just spontaneously exploded, so I'm going to just bypass this trophy here. Grab a few tokens. Not have to worry about running around this maze that's kind of hard to see because the rocks are the same shade as the floor. And of course this cutscene is playing again. So what happens if I decide to... You know, this, uh, that's, here's a good question, and this is definitely a good question. Because even if you're not playing on test play, it's entirely possible to just say goodbye to that trophy and... Why am I leaving without the trophy? Okay, so it's not possible to leave without the trophy. Because apparently the cussing would just play again if I did leave without the trophy. All right, I'm gonna hunt down tokens. And there's nothing down here until I go like this. So it's like other situations where the map pretends to continue. Not gonna worry about hover pads learning that because I don't really need to. I can just walk on air everywhere. And of course I'm gonna skip this, this, this part. because it's lame. So, grab these and screw all that down there, I'm going this way. Or, which way? Somewhere around here there's a trophy. But I'm gonna meet you somewhere, some point later, where maybe I'll find another interesting glitch. Whoa! That was an interesting glitch. So, the spot that I just passed makes the game, uh, well, because this guy uses oil drop, which turns the screen black, you know, blind you, it's surrounded by events that change the screen back to normal, so you're no longer blinded. And I apparently crossed right over that event, and since we're in a place where I'm supposed to have, uh, this going on, that happens. Can I undo it? I bet I can undo it here. Yes, I can. Okay, good, because... I do not want to just continue forth with the screen looking like that. Insert clip of me walking along this path that you're not supposed to be able to get to ever, because I can. You know, I'm kind of curious about this. 
These sparkly dots are here, even though we haven't learned how to use the hover pads. Makes me wonder if those sparkly dots are always there, even if that during the main game, or if the sparkly dots are there as a result of a glitch caused by me having fun glitching the game. But this basically means that since this doesn't kick me off, I can continue forth even though I'm not supposed to be able to go across that yet. So, um, once again, here's a correctional clip saying whether these sparkly dots are always there, or if it's just an accident caused by glitching the game. By the way, as a reminder, Monkey would not be here if we did not help him in Lucky Woods. I'm not gonna go- I'm, I'm gonna go ahead. I am going to go ahead and not help him here, because you have to help him here in order for him to appear in a uh, space world. So, gonna find out what that's gonna do. Probably nothing. As in, literally nothing will happen. And here we are at the rocket convention. I could just hold the circle button and just walk in here without being transformed, but because of a, a glitch that already happened during the main portion of this Let's Play, I already was in there without being disguised. So, not going to do that. This isn't particularly an interesting glitch, but normally you're supposed to like step through here and the music stops so you can play the piano without having the map music playing. However, by holding the circle button, I can just go through here and play the music while the map music is playing play the piano while the map music is playing. If I was talented enough, I could probably try to play this in key with the map music, but I don't think so. So instead, I'm just going to kind of sleep in bed with the Sandman. Alright, I think we're done showing things off and glitching things here, so I'm going to go ahead and meet you at Space World. Oh, and by the way... Visiting Hot Rock before Cloud 9 doesn't break anything. Go figure.